What's up, everybody? Hey, it's James Hurst with The Marketing Show. I've got a special guest, Sean Clark. He's going to tell us all about proposals and estimates for the high-level CRM software. And we're super excited to have him here with us with a uh, live uh, studio audience, you can say, out here on Zoom. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. And uh, Sean, yeah, take it away. Propos this is a pretty detailed Figma, so I apologize. Some of the screens I'll try to skip through. Um, but the idea is, you know, this will this will show you kind of how it's going to look. It'll it'll live under payments here. Um, and the idea is we're bifurcating these things because there's proposals and estimates. Proposals, in my mind, are those things where there's like lots of pretty pictures and lots of descriptions that people spend a lot of time writing. And that I just immediately skip all of that and go to the last slide where they actually tell me how much this is going to cost. Um, but some people, I think, read through those. That's a proposal. An estimate, in my mind, is the thing you get from like the plumber where it's like, toilet repair, $100, right? Like whatever, 500 bucks. And you right. just literally know what's happening. You look at it and you approve it. And it basically starts the job, right? That's the, in my mind, the true difference between the two. And so we're going to attack it that way. So you're going to come in here and you're going to choose what you're going to do. And obviously once, when we'll go into the designer here in a second, but once it's open and it's done, um, what you've got is also all the stuff that goes with it. So you've got all the drafts and then you have also all the events. So did they oh, did they get sent to them? Did they open it? Have they have they you'll be able to take deposits? So have they paid it? So all of that stuff because obviously this is a continuum. We want to be sending proposals. We want to we want to see them take action. All all of this will also be reflected in the workflow builder. So you'll be able to actually create your own customized stuff, but there'll also be basic stuff because we want them to open that proposal. We want the action that proposal being a signature and a payment or a signature or whatever. So then we can move it on into a, hopefully an invoice or into a work or to probably a pipeline really to start the job, that kind of thing. So anyways, that will all be in, in the system when it launches. Obviously just little, this is exactly what it looks like when it send it to somebody. Very, very exciting. I know. Obviously let's see the team is doing a great job here. If they're not there as a, in contact already, you can add them. Uh, and then here's the proposal builder, and it's going to look very similar to all of the other builders we've been rolling out. We're trying to standardize the building experience across the app. We, a, I think we've made it a lot more modern, but also I think um, we just make it more standard. So whether it's a blog or a website or a funnel or an email or you know whatever or a proposal, you can build it, and you're not going to think, "Oh, that's funny. This looks different." So anyhow, that's all there. Um, you can see they've got all of the uh, the the right elements. You can obviously navigate pages because it's a multi-page experience. Uh, you can talk, talk about who needs to sign it. There's all kinds of variables and stuff. So I really thought through a bunch of this. A lot of this isn't going to be terribly exciting. Custom value support, obviously. Um, I love how they previewed that out, which is kind of cool. I, I also wanted to say that I, I love this idea of like a custom value picker it, in it, all, all across the app too. Is that something? Yes, that yes. You are? Okay. 100%, 100%. Should never not be there. Right. It, um, yeah, these days what's fun is there's, there's starting to be a lot of standards and rules and one, and one of them is, you know, you have to have the custom value picker in all text fields, right? So that's pretty critical. Or like for images here, you can see on the screen, if you're adding an image, you need to be able to access the media library. And it's also rolling out that you're also going to need to be able to use AI. So if you need to generate an image, you could generate an AI image here or copy, et cetera. So all of those things will always be in every field. Now, some of the older components are still, we're still working it out, but as we move forward, it should always be there. And if not, it's a miss. It's more of a bug than anything, and we'll go after it and get it get it added. But I think this will have that out of the box. So this is the proposals we're looking at here. Then. Yeah, you're you're yeah. So because a proposal, proposal again, group. going back to the proposals, it's it's always a beautiful thing generally, right? The whole idea is you're showcasing something. You want to put images of your past work in there. It's a it generally is a more detailed, long drawn out experience. So we're going to be putting in maybe a lot of sections on the stages that you're in. You know, I could imagine. You know, let's say you're remodeling a house or something. I could see this being that entire timeline and really talking about that, showcasing other homes you've remodeled, things like that. Will there be like, uh, you know, save as like a template, like your templates, you can start from a, that kind of thing, right? Yes, yep, yep, yep. So we will, so as always, we'll MVP this thing. So I can't remember where the MVP stops and starts, but I definitely know on the roadmap, there'll be templates, there'll be, you'll be able to put it in the snapshots. Cause again, like everything, like I always think of this, like how would this be built for me? Like I could never build anything nice looking, so we better have templates, right? Yeah. So I can foresee a template. We'll also probably build it into the template library like we have for funnels and websites and everything else. So all that will be there. And again, by industry, so forth and so on to try to make life simple. And uh, I got a hand raise at this point. So should we take a, I think we should probably take questions via section if they're specific. So yeah, yeah. go for it. What do you got? Go ahead, Mark. 
All right. Um, quick question. Uh, I assume we can also make our own templates because yep. if a company make the yeah, once in a template. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's absolutely every yeah, time, right? Hundred percent. So yeah, that it'll be put in snapshots and stuff like that. So the way you know the way this sort of okay. So let's talk about templates real quick. So the way this bifurcates or trifurcates is probably the better way to put it is the vast vast majority of people don't have their own templates. I'd say ninety five percent plus. So th that's where we need to come in and provide a lot of industry templates. I'd say the other four percent have their own templates, but they they sort of are masters of the universe overall. So they are, I'm going to not just give you some silly template, but I'm also going to give you the full system that allows you to take this sucker end to end. And then there's this weird 1% that has their own template library, but that's all they have. Like That's like a component they would give you. So we're focused mostly on the 99%, not really on the 1% yet. We'll let the ideas list as always win the day. But um, to, but those are the two kind of flavors that I think uh, you're going to see this in. Okay. So for me, as an agency, that is an opportunity, right? As an agency, if you have a client, you make a template for them where they can work in or yes. it wrong. That's the idea. So and, yeah, and, for us, it will be very important as an agency to create one. That's why they'll be in snapshots because, you know, yeah. so, so if I take a holistic look at this, right? So, it, 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 I mean, these days... We we sort of say, well, how would the SaaSpreneur use this specific feature, right? And there's going to be two types of SaaSpreneurs. So there's going to be the type that follow my crazy advice and and just go local and target that local business. And they're going to be all about delivering maximal value utilizing sort of in, in place systems is how I think about it. And then there'll be the SaaSpreneurs that have a very specific niche that they go after, uh, in which case they're going to not just bring one template, but a whole system. And that system will have templates for everything, right? Funnels, websites, proposals, social media templates, all that stuff. And so that will flow across this. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Okay, so moving on. So we got our cool image there, uh, just showing that you can drag more video elements, same construct as before, you know, external video elements as well as uh, media library elements. Nice. Uh, tables and stuff and things. Uh, oh, and then, okay, so, and then this is where things kind of get more interesting. So you drag in your product list here, and this is where you're going to be setting up kind of, so this is sort of like an estimate buried in a proposal, because I sort of think about an estimate as being like this component, but we'll see this in kind of in a second here. So you can sort of break this out, and you can see, you know, you can do a couple of things. So one, you can create all of the items that are, are required. You can also add optional items. So let's say, you, you know, you're saying, well, you could buy the gold package and, and or the silver, or you could add the such and such upgrade. You can check box those items, give them the ability to do that if they want to, um, or you can also just set them as standard. And then of course, down here, you can see, you can, you can actually uh, create a payment schedule around it. So when they sign the invoice, you can create a down payment scenario. You can also then break the project up in subsequent um, milestone estimate or milestone invoices, things like that. Um, excuse me. So that's kind of where this is where this all gets done kind of down at the bottom or at the end. Oh, that's, that's a lot more uh, complex than I thought you guys would. Is, is That's probably maybe not MVP, but maybe down the road or. Um, I don't know. I kind of sort of think they're shooting for something like this to begin with because the estimate component kind of has to look like this too. Yeah. Um, and again, I, you know, for the agency, I want this to be fully functional, but I really care a lot about the plumber and the lawyer and the dentist and the, you know, and the home remodeler. Um, almost more than the agency, because I feel like, if, again, I always say like, if you could sell something to your customer and, and you're going to keep them, right. But selling something yourself, like that's cool, but let's do that second. But I think it'll work for both parties in this case. Um, obviously you can start adding. So, so a lot of this, so think about this holistically. So the system is starting to have some really fun um, abilities to, to pull from other areas that are cohesive. So we already have items, right. Or products. Yeah. And so now th these will become products. And then in the future, products could also be used in other things, like, for example, e-commerce or memberships, right? Things like that. So you're going to start to have this cohesive ability to create products that can be sold through all kinds of things. You don't do it through funnels, obviously, and websites, but you'll be able to sell these things across many, many, many channels as we continue to truck along. But everything in the proposals and the estimates will follow along with that construct. Um, so again, here... Uh, you can see here when you're setting up your payment schedule, percentage, custom amount, um, divide evenly. Uh, so really trying to think through all the different uh, concepts. Robert, what do you got? Will subscriptions be available through this part as well? I believe so. 
I don't know where it falls in the, I mean, the answer is yes, a hundred percent, but I don't know what that means. When, like when that means, when that means, but I'll find out. Good question. Okay. We're almost like a Thank maintenance you. plan, right? Like a, like an AC maintenance plan. Yeah, something exactly. Like that, right? Precisely. Precisely. And I don't know if, you know, the interesting thing will be um, how that works in the real world. So like, you know, there's the, let's say there's like the initial install job, right? Yeah. And then there's the maintenance plan. There are two different things if you think about it, right? So the question is, how does the real world structure those? Do they put them on the original proposal? Maybe they do, because then you can sort of opt them into it as an upsell. But maybe, but I wonder if in the aggregate, those are going to be two different invoices, obviously, because once the install is done, that's one invoice. And then the subsequent subscription would be a secondary invoice, right? So yeah, that's I, a really good question. I, I don't disagree, though. It'd be great to have it on the proposal. I Love used it. to own a lawn care company. We I owned that for 20 years. And at the end of it, we had pushed everybody into a subscription of some form, whether oh, yeah. it was whether it was weekly mowing uh, or a fertilizing package or whatever. Oh and yeah, just everything, everything is subscription now, 100%. Yeah, we will yeah. We will definitely, trust me, we will definitely have that construct in here somehow. Yep, cool. Yeah, we already have subscription awesome. invoices. I hope you know that. Yes. And I'm guessing a lot of this stuff will end up in the customer portal too, right? 100%. 100%. So yeah, so the customer portal, which we'll actually look at here in a minute, yeah. Uh, we can talk about that, but that is also going to be where a lot of this lines up. So th this is what's kind of fun about a lot of where we're headed here. Oh, look, it says monthly service. Almost like that's recurring. Sounds like someone, see, this is why you don't have to think, don't, don't ask me, just look at the pictures. Um, somebody thought of it. Um, so this is the nice thing about having a great product team. So um, and then obviously they're just talking about how you can market is paid. Okay. And then this is where the signature stuff comes in and you can have single signers, you can have multiple signers, all that stuff. Uh, and, and then the mission here is really to um, make this stand up to any kind of uh, actual, um, I, I don't want to say legal challenge, because I think that's like, I'm not a lawyer, but the goal here is to, is to we're adopting the same standard as every other signature provider out there in terms of data capture. So IP addresses and fingerprints and this and that, there's a, there's like a published standard now. And I know the team is, uh, is going to, from day one, have that standard in place. So we'll be capturing all that information and then hope and then making it available to you so you can see that. Uh, so if at any point down the road, someone says, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I've got a physical hand raised. Go for it. <laughs> I think one of the questions that came out of this was yeah, this electronic signature uh, process is within estimates and proposals. Will that make its way over? Will that same Port builder eventually? Yeah, for sure. As an independent like, component. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. like, we, you know, yeah, we have. You saw, so a lot of this quarter has been about updating the UI and the UX. So you've yeah. seen a lot of that. The new form builder actually rolled out, right? So um, it held back a lot of features. And, uh, and, uh, and on one hand, I could say, well, that's unfortunate. But on the other hand, I think the new UX and UI is radically better. And so I think it's, it was worth eating a quarter up just to get that stuff out. Plus, it allowed us to open the door to multilingual internationalization, which for, for me is huge. I mean, even in the United States, I, I think the, the the number of people in the United States who are native Spanish speakers is huge. It's something like 40 million people. So I never knew that until I went to a presentation by uh, Hotmart in it, uh, Last Traffic and Conversion of all places, or maybe it was the one before. But I was just blown away by that stat. And I thought, wow, what a what a cool, cool stat. So let you know, even before that, we were going to do internationalization. But when I thought, wow, you know, in my own home country, I, I didn't even realize there are 40 million native Spanish speakers. I I'm just missing those folks. So what a great opportunity to um, make the app more friendly for them. Love it. So, so that, yeah. may, that may or may not come out with this though, is what you're saying? Oh, no, this isn't part of that, right? Um, so yeah. yeah, so this will not be part of it. But the, but the great thing is all the components we're building now are all part of the same UI library. So that signature component and that flow will be available to the forms team. And then we'll pick that up. Uh, and I, and I, I, we can kind of, I can try to see if I can grab their uh, schedule for next quarter. Anyhow, so you can see right here, uh, you know, this is the signature experience. It's very similar to on purpose of every other signature experience you've ever seen. Uh, because again, we're not here to try to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to replace the steering wheel with like a two handled thing or a joystick, even right. if that would be cooler, that's not our game. Um, so again, uh, just making this short and simple and uh, to the point. Uh, and then let me see, oh, is there anything over here? Oh, that's, I think this just shows that it might be signed or something. 
um, yeah, something. So you, Anyways, you could have, uh, um, you could have you, you talked about how this all would all integrate with workflows. I, I can see like triggers for like, you know, invoice opened, estimate open. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have all that stuff. Signature, um, you know, not not signed. Exactly. Now, yeah. Adam, you, Adam, you raised your hand. Did you still have a question or did it get answered or? I think he kind of answered it. I was because we use Pandadoc for a lot of this stuff. So. Yeah, that is just, definitely our, uh, that is what we're aiming to replace here on the agency side. Yeah, it looked like you guys followed basically the exact same, the exact same structure. With Pandadoc, you get like a little virtual certificate saying oh, yeah. that it was signed and authorized. Uh -huh. um, is something like that. Gonna, I know you mentioned like the legal no component. Clue. That's a great cool. question. Yeah, that was, that uh, was my question, but you answered like 99% of it. So the only, the only other question that I would have is like that legal certificate of, of signature. Whatever, I, I, what I, what I said is, look, we need to, we need to map up or match up to the standard that's out there. And the team took that from a, from a signature perspective and the team took that super seriously. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the, the portal thingy. This is communities, which is really cool as well. Um, I'll find the I'll find the portal. Oh, I know why. Oh, hold on, I'll find it. Yeah, but we. I, but if there's like, so what I care about is that we match the like whatever the real standard is out there. I don't know if Pandadoc's quote unquote legal certificate is actually first of all legal, <laughs> but whatever the actual golden rule is, that's what matters to me. And if that's what it is, we'll produce that too. Sweet. Yeah. No, this looks good. This is going to be huge. I uh, totally agree with you. I think it's going to be monster. And and oh, and then of course, I think that this can't be undersold with tap to pay coming to the mobile uh, experience because again, I think when when I think of um, when I think of service businesses out there, again, collecting funds is really important to them. Um, and here is the Figma for this. Um, I was my, I was really getting my wife's nerves this weekend because we were at a farmer's market and I kept going up to all the, we bought a bunch of stuff and I kept going in at, to people, they'd have the square reader and I'd say, oh, did you know you don't need that anymore? You can actually just tap right on the phone. And my wife was like, shut up. Um, but it, I, I was like trying to get people to realize that because, you know, a lot of people still have the square readers. Um, and then wow. one guy tried to, one guy, he rebuffed me. He said, uh, oh yeah, but my phone locks and this and that. And, and then I walked away like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. But then I realized, wait, no, 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 that's a terrible point because you still have to unlock your stupid phone and put in the dollar amount, dummy. So I, I, I wanted to race back there and tell him, but I think my, I thought my wife would yell at me. But so anyways, I didn't. Um, but so here's the mobile experience that we're rolling out. And so you can see it's very simple and it's everything you've already seen before, although tipping is in here, which I think is very cool. Um, and uh, and then, of course, you're going to choose tap to pay or inner card. And then you just literally hold the card up to the mm. phone. Doop, and then there you go. You collect money. Fancy. That is going to be a game changer for a also lot of our customers. Holy. That's, that's nuts. Mm. And we're working with Stripe right now to do something that I personally love, um, which is tricking people into doing things that are good for them. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, so the sign up experience. So the thing about payments is difficult, right? Is having that. Comp so I sort of regard payments as like corn, essentially. Um, there are definitely some cases where that's not exactly true, but for the bulk load of most local businesses, Payments are are just corn. <laughs> One person's payments is basically the same as another person's payments, and so um, and and ultimately, I, I think so. The but the problem is, you go to them and you say, "Oh yeah, hey, you want to use this?" But you, first, you got to sign up for Stripe and this and that. So Stripe used to have this, and they said they can re resurrect it for us, but we'll see. So basically, what you do is instead of making someone sign up for an account, you don't. You just give them this, and then they go and they tap the card. Boom. And they collect the 546 bucks and then they get then they get the email hey congratulations you got 546 bucks now in order to get it click here to finish signing up for your account so it'll trick them into collecting money and then signing up wow. so that's the flow i'm going for some people are going to hate me for it but i love it tiffany or, or sean I'll yeah like tiffany you. yeah 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 so many exciting features we've been waiting on this one for a while so i'm super pumped um, there was some chat about the QuickBooks integrations, and is that oh, yeah. at the same time, or is that uh, a separate project? Well, no, we had we actually had to let some. Sadly, we had to let that engineer go, but we rehired for that position, and there the new engineer walking through the door is already working on it. So it will get pushed, but it won't get pushed by much. Okay. So, um, because one of the pieces, so we're, you know. And trust me, I know more about the QuickBooks online integration than you might imagine, unless you know my backstory very well. 
Yes. Well, I know that I, I know you are definitely have some. Do you know my backstory really well? Not really well, but I know. Okay. That well, there you go. Now. Let's well, well then let's talk about my backstory. So I made this app. And this app integrates with QuickBooks. I'm, I like actually made this app. Like this is all me. So that's why it's kind of terrible. But like you, um, like you coded uh, it? Yeah, heck yeah. You coded um, it. Uh, but this this is an add-on for uh, QuickBooks and Zero. And what it does is it automates accounts receivable uh, pay stuff. Basically, it sends emails and texts to remind people to pay invoices and makes it easy to do it. And I grew this to a thousand customers off my kitchen table. And so as a result, I understand a lot about QuickBooks Online integration as well as uh, uh, why it's important. So trust me, I get it. We will absolutely make that happen. And I totally understand why, because you can't use any of this stuff unless you can push to QuickBooks. And then after that, probably zero. Um, and everybody else can, I, I could care less. Um, but ultimately, don't worry, that's our war path here. So at one of the, there's been an issue with the QuickBooks API of late. And so anything that was set up is not really working very well in terms like of- Like in our system? No, in terms of like backend connections with me for Zapier. Why? Wow. So Are you sure about that? <laughs> it feels we, weird, right? It's into it. Why would there be an issue? I always wondered why people didn't run their whole business out of QuickBooks. One of the biggest reasons is you don't want your employees in there, right? Um, it's too, it's, it's complex and cumbersome. And maybe that's what QuickBooks wants you to do. And I'm sure they'll work hard on that, but I don't care. Um, I'm going to keep treating QuickBooks the way I would, I think QuickBooks should be treated, which is, it's really the place where the bookkeeper, the accountant and the owner live. So like for us, like the data, I think that matters from a financial perspective are estimates and invoices mainly and payments, right? right. So those will be the three elements that we focus on getting into QuickBooks as far as like projects and stuff. I don't know. Once the initial invoice is paid, you can't update who paid it. And so then you can't move it to the project very easily. You can, as for the accountant, you can, but the end user can't. So right. when you create the customer, there's a, a feature of do you want it to be a project as well? And so, like, I'm going to say no, because I feel like we're going to just manage the project in high level. Okay. Something like that. But we'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It's a good point. It's good to know okay. as a gotcha. But in general, I'm just, like, I just kind of like it quick post for things like invoices and estimates, right? Like, I don't know, like, it just feels like the less complexity we put in there and the more operations we keep in, in high level, the more, frankly, that you'll own as far, as far as creating value for that business. Mm -hmm. And what do you need QuickBooks for? You really just need it for financials anyway. So that's truly what it's for. Right. Yeah. The projects is just for profitability tracking within the projects, not for managing projects. It's Got like, it. Okay. Well, then we may, we may have to deal with the integration with the projects as well. So, well, yeah. I'll try to remember your name when we hit that roadblock and I'll send my project. Yeah, we're, we're a QuickBooks Pro Advisor on, on the Canadian side anyway. Oh, so there you go. I, mean, I, I know I lots of Canadian know. Pro Advisors. I, I, I went to a, a QuickBooks convention with a bunch of them too. Perfect. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Tom Allen. So, um, yeah, my accountants, my bookkeeper, I should say, is crazy uh, want about asking questions about when am I going to be better about QuickBooks. Uh, yeah. So that it can be wonderful. She's actually one of the ones that into it puts her face out there, one of their top pro people. Um, so she bugs What's me about her name? That. Uh, Eileen Sass hmm. is her name. Um, and so she's been on the stage with the CEO many times. Um but so she um, she's asked about all that. I, I keep pushing her off like, I don't you know, that's not my thing. So my thing is I've got a client that is like ready to be customer number one for proposals and, and estimates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I've literally in the background got his screens up. I was training the virtual assistant. I have doing work for him today on some things. So he has been in Jobber and he just. Yeah, see, that, that's kind of that's leader. great. That's a that's a really good uh, that's a really good point because that's exactly our target. So sorry, keep yeah. going. So um, the questions around functionality where I had to go do a few creative things, he had already downgraded his job or account to not have the Zapier integration. So we just have it send out emails to email parsers and pull the data into a uh, high level seat now. Oh, oh, jobber. They, they were never, I tried to integrate with those dudes. They were, they never had an open API. I really, I really was very disgruntled about that. No, no, it's just, but they have to pay $350 more a month for that level of jobber to get access to yeah. Zapier with it. And you sucks. still can't do everything you need to do. So, but as you know, there's thousands of jobber guys we can go steal. So yeah. uh, when you're looking at proposals and estimates, so one of the features that I'm having to do right now is I'm having to create contacts for every property under a commercial client of his that, and he's got multiple. So okay. and that I've got a main contact with the phone number and email that's the real guy. 
And yeah, that's the, that's like the company, and then each contact would be a, a property. Yeah, but but I'm having to do it as email plus one plus two plus three, so I can create contacts with a legit with an email address for each of those. So in our world, when this goes live. <laughs> Will I have the ability to have that parent company contact and the main owner of that company and then be able to create proposals for every address of those various buildings and have those proposals linked to that one contact? Or am I going to still have to do something crazy around property addresses being contacts with a different you're email? Being way too, you're being way too hopeful for an MVP, Tom. So no, I'm, I, I don't even know that for sure. I'm, I'm just going to guess. But the good news is the the one of the big things we're doing next quarter is I'm trying to even think of what this is called. We've only seen one other person do it um, who shall not be named, but it's sort of like uh, nomenclature uh, kind of constructs where you'll choose the industry and based on that, we'll flip the language. So like an easy one would be like a veterinary clinic. So instead of like contacts and company, you'll have pets and parents, right? And so I could see us doing something as part of that initiative that sort of recognizes that like a pet probably doesn't have an address or doesn't need one or doesn't have an email and doesn't need one. I can see where like what you're saying is that I don't really need an email for the property per se. Um, although I don't think it's radically bad what you're doing because it's kind of cool because then you could actually organize the emails based on property, whatever. Um, but I can see why you might not want to do that. So I will definitely mention that as part of that use case because I think that's how we would handle this, in which case that would that would roll its way up to crap uh, to uh, sorry proposals and estimate. Okay, yeah, because right now in Java you've got the client and then all of their properties. You can just keep adding properties yeah. to mm -hmm. the proposals. For each I, one. I'm with you on that. So yeah. I'll uh, I'll mention that. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm gonna take a quick note. And if anybody needs an example and it's not a recorded thing that the whole world's gonna see, I can happily go show you screens and happy to be a guinea pig. And so is well, he. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna in fact. Uh, Actually, drop your email in the chat and I'll send it over to Sid. He's our, um, um, or whatchamacallit, our product manager for that. Love it. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Um, let's see. All right. So now let's talk about the let's talk about the client portal real quick, uh, James, since you brought it up. Yeah. Uh, uh, just take a quick note. Okay, done. Okay, so <clears throat> this idea is really cool in my opinion. Um, and, and here's why it's exactly what it says. It's the one-stop shop for leads to engage with the business. Now, this could be your agency for those of you who are thinking about this as agencies, but also as importantly, your clients, right? And get back to the fact that I don't care about you. I care about your clients because if we care about your clients, you guys will be fine because they'll pay you and you can stick around and do whatever. But as long as they're happy, you'll be happy. Trust me. That's how it works. So you'll be able to come in and blah, 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 branding and yada, yada. But, um, the idea here, if we can get to something interesting, ah, here, so Imagine the following, okay? So you, you log in and this will be customizable based uh, on however you want to do it. But there'll be, uh, so first MVP will have, I think it's affiliates, communities, payments, and courses. You can see this. But very quickly, invoices will go up, documents will go up, estimates will go up, um, all that stuff. There'll be a dashboard thing too, but you'll be able to choose like where they land because some people like, you're, and if, oh, and by the way, if they don't, if you don't have a community, they won't show up. If you don't have memberships, they won't show up, right? Like, so don't, you know, think about this kind of like, you do when you're in your Gmail account and you've got the little uh, square in the top right here to switch between the various apps. But the idea here is a one-stop shop for all client specific items, um, regardless of type of business. Um, and so we don't want to have to have people logging in and out of various things uh, anymore. Um, you'll just have this one seamless spot that you can direct clients to, whether they are your clients or your clients' customers. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Cool. Estimates and proposals obviously will be here in here as well. In fact, I got a good, uh, it was funny. I actually got a good rundown from Neil Ashish. Um, uh, he's he put together this list. What did he it was say? Interesting he said, that you said, it was interesting that you said the one stop spot for your leads. Uh, is it even going to be like pre sale type stuff? And all well, you'll be able to, so you'll be able to choose when people get access to this. And I think this is what's important about it. You know, you'll be able to really choose your own destiny here as to how you want to use this. Yeah. You know, it's like think about something like communities, which is yet to launch, but will launch this week. Um, and what you're looking at here, some people will use a community for free. You'll invite people in, hey, learn about our community, whatever, start to learn about our brand and you know, whatever. But some people won't. Some people will sell access to their communities. And it's like, no, until you pay, you're not getting in. So everyone right. will have a very, uh, I think there'll be a wide variety of use cases. Some people will use it for customer support, like client. I think I fully expect a lot of you will use this as a place to bring your clients in 
to, to do things like SaaS support and so forth. Um, it, it, and I think that will that will work out really great. So I, again, I think there's a radical, uh, huge amount of, and, of utilization here. And courses is the same thing: paid course, free course, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. And when you send out estimates and proposals, right? You want somebody to come in, and maybe as part of your estimate process. First, you're like, hey, before I can give you an estimate, I need you to upload your tax returns, pictures of your house or the you know, mm. problem with your blah, blah, blah. You, great place for them to come and do that, right? So very, great. very cool way to uh, you know, really open this up to a lot of different use cases. Go ahead, Robert. Sure, you're, I'm sure you're getting to it, but uh, there's a couple of us that are just clamoring to know, when will proposals and estimates uh, go live? It's this quarter, man. What are you talking about? Um, okay, James. Well, I heard NASA say it might slip until July. Well, uh, I guess uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm well, pu I'm pushing. I mean, I was told this quarter, and I'm sticking to it until such time as otherwise. Uh, uh, when oh, I wait, hold on. I uh, I I've got the I've got the engineer. He wrote me back. He said I asked him if there's a link I could use for this webinar. He said, "Sure. It looks like the staging build is broken. Let me try to fix it and send you." uh something which he hasn't done yet. but i asked him are we still good for this quarter so i'll let you know so you'll hear it here if i if if we do uh oh whatsapp so anybody who cares whatsapp um we are literally in the final throws the co code is completely done we were just waiting for meta to approve us um and this this was a four-year odyssey um so i'm very happy to see that we're finally about to be able to release it so for anybody who wants to work with anyone outside of the united states this is great for you registration bam there you go buddy inbound calling um on the web coming in um i'm pushing hard for june but it's probably going to slide a little in july but not much so yeah we already have the mobile apps and now we'll have the desktop so uh and then very quickly we'll keep on rolling there we'll move into ivr we'll, we'll move into ring all strategies um all that good stuff multiple brands in the 497 account coming soon um let's see customizable welcome emails uh, more than three SaaS plans, uh, user limits on SaaS plans. Oh yeah. Per user limits. Now this, in my opinion, opens a very big door because there are some, uh, systems out there, who, one, one of which is initials are AC where, you know, a fool might believe that it's cheaper to go there, but you know, there are a lot of fools. And so the best way to counter that is to give you folks the ability to actually sell into that strategy. So with a per user limit, there's a couple of options. One, for those of you who just want to make more money, you can charge more, but also we'll open the door to allow you to charge less out of the gate in order to give people that, that sort of feeling that somehow your offering is cheaper if you enable this. Now, we won't let you hurt yourself. So just bear in mind, we will grade, uh, put an automatic gradient in there so you can't like sell you know a dollar you know a month for at the 7000 users or something crazy but the idea would be that if you ever came across someone who said oh well it's 12 bucks over there or whatever it is you can match that uh and not and not lose the sale so to me this is pretty bad um let's see new SaaS configurator new agency dashboard uh agency rebelling already done that's all SaaS stuff market auto report is being updated to include uh all that stuff um, I think this is the coolest part, though. This one will be out here um, in the next two weeks. The ability to actually put in more like restaurants near me, and you can see at a glance, okay, how many ratings did they choose their? Do they claim their GMB? Do they have a WordPress website? So you can start targeting businesses based on your sales pitch without having to actually click into every single one of them just to find out if they've got some of the basics. And we can expand this over time, but I think it's a great start um, in trying to get more of a SaaS pitch out there. Love it. Let's see. Auto create, da, da da da. That's good. That's good. Looking good. Looking good. Yay. Okay. There it is. More questions before we wrap up. Yeah. So let's see here. So are you? Uh, there's the big, you know, A2P SMS compliance. Are you going to be on that uh, workshop on the on the fifteenth? I hope that... not, but I'm glad we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, 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 I've I've heard I've heard enough and dealt with A2P enough to know it's terrible, and I'd rather stop okay. talking about it. But I'll stop yes. to talk about it. But it just it's, I mean, it has no good answers, unfortunately. It's do it or else. And even if you do it, it's probably going to be delayed. And no, no one cares. Um, the carriers don't care about you. They don't care about your customers. They don't care at all. And I think it's going to take a big, you know, 3 billion app pile up on one side to maybe get the carriers to delay, which we have seen them do six or seven times before. So 
I am hopeful, but it always takes some a, a, some kind of explosion for them to do anything. And then you guys have a couple of events. I'm going to be seeing you here in Dallas at the Sasspreneur event. That's right. Next week. Next week already. And then uh, maybe you can just pull up a slide of the uh, or the website for the Level Up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Le Level Up is going to be huge again this year um, and every year, we hope, from here on out. Uh, but I think we really, I mean, we surprised ourselves at how amazing, oh, I hate when you do that. All right. You guys we surprised ourselves at how amazing this event really was um, last year. And so we're going to do it again at roughly the same size. Um, I, I do hope we bring the robots back. They were definitely one of my favorite parts. Um, see if there's anything interesting here. Is VIP um, still sold out? I know that was, that's, there was, it's a small enough crowd that you could really get to rub shoulders with a lot of the, the you know, the top. Well, and, and this know. is sort of, I mean, to, to me, this was truly what this event was about. I mean, it, it, the way I, uh, describe this event is that it's the, the type of event where even if you hate high level, you'd still want to go because someone you always wanted to meet will be there. And that's truly how we'll, we'll keep this event again this year. Um, and so we'll, we'll continue to add just really top, amazing folks. Um, and it is really just about highlighting, in my opinion, uh, you know, the, the, you, you, you folks and having you talk to and meet everybody along the journey that you would ever be interested in meeting. And so that's really our focus, uh, this year and we'll, we'll do it again. Love it. And it'll never be five. I mean, I don't care if we could stock 5,000 people, it'll never be that big because I just, I just think you lose a lot of the personal, you know, yeah, touch you, when you do that. You up, yeah, you end up bumping into people the whole few days long. Yeah, and I mean, and if you just said, I really want to meet Billy Jean, for example, I mean, you could meet him at this event. I mean, you're not going to talk to him for an hour, but he'll talk to you for 10 minutes at the bar. And, yep. But if you go to a, I mean, any of the other events he goes to all year, I mean, good luck if you get five seconds with the guy. You might see him as on his way out the door. And And the other thing is speakers, what we've learned is, Speakers don't like going to big events because they 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 hate it. Because they go in, they do their thing, and then they get the heck out as fast as possible. Because it's just this big, massive, herking event. It's not fun for them either. So we're gonna we're gonna do something people actually want to attend. Uh, plus, we get to take over the whole, whole hotel. It just it's a, it just feels a lot cooler that way. So we'll we'll do it yeah, again. I loved it. I loved it last time. I'm coming to Saspreneur. I'm coming to level up. Um, thank you so much, Sean. Estimates proposals. We're all excited. We appreciate you. Me too. I can't wait. So, um, I haven't dropped any videos today, so I better go do that. Cause of course we already have a bunch of other features out too. Okay. Thanks everyone for, uh, showing up thank and your you. good questions. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye. We'll all. Okay. Bye guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Advice given is for educational purposes only and may not be applicable to your business. You should know that the marketing show receives compensation through its affiliate relationship for the products and services it recommends. Thank you for your support and we hope to see you on the next episode of The Marketing Show.